This is a P3 video on electromagnetic induction and the motor effect. Whenever you see this symbol here, it means that there is an exam question that you can attempt. You have to know generally what a magnetic field is and how it can be produced. So a magnetic field is produced whenever you have a permanent uh, magnet or a magnetic material or it is also produced whenever an electric current runs through a wire you can see here and a bar magnet here. Now as for magnetic materials the only magnetic materials are iron, cobalt and nickel. Stainless steel is also magnetic that is because it is an alloy of iron. So electric current, when it goes through a wire, will produce a magnetic field around it in these concentric circles here. So it's only actually there when there's current flowing. As soon as the current stops, there will no longer be a magnetic field, which we can actually use. So as I said earlier, when it is just a straight wire, it's called concentric circles. So the magnetic field can be seen in circles going around. This one is a bit more useful. If you actually loop the wire around, it takes on a much more magnetic field as, say, a permanent bar magnet would. And it means that it's a lot stronger strength of the magnetic field in this area here as to compared to the concentric circles. This shape is called a solenoid, and you might need to know that. It's worth having that in your head if they talk about it in the exam. Now, by having an electric current going for a wire and producing a magnetic field, it's what we call an electromagnet. Um, and we can actually use these in everyday life. Um, you can make the magnetic field quite strong in different situations. And the advantage is that it's only there when the current is switched on. They've been used since the 19th century for different sorts of devices. So you can actually use them in cranes, lifting, scrap metal, um, it's not aluminium or copper, as I said before, because they are not magnetic, so they will not interact with the magnetic field. You can use them in motors, which I'll go on to in a, site in a bit. Loudspeakers, they love to bring up this question, and I have one at the end of the PowerPoint. Audio VHS tapes, MRI scans, um, they're really, really loud when you have one in the hospital. Uh, particle accelerators, like those in CERN, and maglev trains, which are actually work really, really well. Um, my opinion they are the future. So the way you could increase the strength of the electromagnet, because it's not very good if it's quite weak, it's not going to pick up say a car in a scrap metal yard, is you can increase the number of turns on the actual coil, so increase the number of copper turns. You can increase the electric current to so produce a stronger magnetic field and you can also, also use an iron core inside because iron is a magnetic material that will amplify the magnetic field also. So here you can pause if you wish to. There is um, an exam question. This one came up in the specimen paper when this new uh, specification came out. So you see here it says that the diagram shows equipment used by a student to investigate the strength of five different electromagnets. You may have done this um, in Key Stage 3 or even Key Stage 4, but they will do this. They will give you... Um, different experiments and expect you to apply knowledge you know to them. So you see here we've got a clamp and stand, we've got an iron nail, then we've got the coil around the iron nail because that's our iron core, um, and then here we have a current, uh, we can see this battery so there must be um, power in this one, there's an ammeter to measure the current and then we also have a variable resistor there, you should know those symbols from P2, um, and then we can see paper clips have been attached. So it says, the stronger the electromagnet, the more paper clips it will hold. Why is it important that paper clips are used uh, in the investigation are the same size? They ask these questions quite a lot. Now, a lot of people will straight away go to fur test. However, they don't accept that answer anymore. Um, it's basically so that between the different exam investigations, it will be able to compare the results fairly. You're allowed to use the word fairly, but you're not allowed to use the, the phrase fair test anymore, unfortunately. Um, to be, um, the five electromagnets used by the student are shown below. The electromagnet was made by wrapping lengths of insulated wire. It doesn't have to be copper wire exposed. It can have the insulation around it, around identical nails. Um, again, that would be a control. Current through the coil, um, 
number of wires around, so, sorry, number of turns around the wire, and then the number of paper clips that have actually been held. So if we can see here, uh, we've got one amps, 10 turns, three paper clips, two amps, 20 turns, 12 paper clips, one amp, 30 turns, nine paper clips, one amp, 20 turns, six paper clips, and four amps, 15 turns, and 18 paper clips. Now, for one mark, it says the student wants to find out the strength of electromagnet depends on the number of turns, uh, wire, and the coil. Which electromagnet should the student compare in order to do this? Right, so it doesn't actually specify how many of these you can use, but you need to be thinking that in order to be able to compare results, you're only allowed to change one variable. If you have two different variables, independent variables changed, um, then you're not going to be able to determine. So you need to have a look. So all the turns are sort of different apart from these two. I personally would go to have a look at the amount of current that's been supplied. So this one's got one one amp and different number of turns. This one's got one amp and different number of turns. And this one's got one amp and different number of turns. So I would say J, L and M. So it says a student concluded the strength of an electromagnet is always directly proportional to the number of terms on the coil. And then the question asks, explain how the data from the investigation supports the student's conclusion. Now, this is for two marks. Now, a really important point here is it says explain how the data. So they are going to want you to include some numerical values within your answer, as well as a statement as well. So for this, you need to say how if we just flip back that the number of turns increase um so we look at j and l here the number of turns increase as does the number of paper clips by the same factor so if you can see here it's got one amp and 10 turns one amp and 30 turns this is three times more turns than this and this is three times more paper clips than this so you could say that and then you could use that as an example within the question of the two marks then it says the student makes one more electromagnet by winding 100 turns onto the nail. Before testing the electromagnet, the student predicted the number of turns on the paper clip um, when it was a current of one amp. How many paper clips should the student predict that the electromagnet would hold? Show clearly how you worked out your answer. So this is for two marks. So we'll go back again. So remember, it's 100 turns. So we can see here that if it increases by the same factor as we discovered before, one amp and 10 turns was three paper clips. 100 turns is 10 times more than uh, 10 turns. So if we do three times 10, that would give 30. So our answer there would be 30. And then the last question says, um, when the student tested the electromagnet, it held 20 paper clips. This is not what the student predicted, as so happens in science so often. Explain what the student should do when new data does not seem to support the prediction that was made. Now, this again is going on to your ISA um, sort of evaluation questions, and this is for three marks. Now, from doing investigations for such like your ICEs, you should know that if anything doesn't quite look the same, what you should automatically do is you should repeat the investigation. OK, so you should repeat the investigation again. This will then determine whether there was any anomalous results. And then if there isn't, you should then reconsider your scientific prediction to see whether it was right or not. So here are the actual examination um, mark scheme that, that was given. So you can have a look through this now, see whether you already got it right. And here is the bottom bit. So the next part of this video is electromagnetic induction. Uh, this is taken from one of the mind maps that is also on YouTube. How electricity is generated is what you should have learned in P1 when you learned about thermal power stations. And you should know that somehow we'd, we would turn a turbine, be it by steam or be it by um, water. And that would be connected to a generator, which we just told you generates electricity. But you need to then know in P3 
how this is actually um, generated. So power stations use electricity generators um, that works on the principle of electromagnetic induction. Um, so basically it generates electricity using a magnetic field. There are two different ways um, that you can generate electric current from a magnetic field. There is the first way here. So you can either move or intersect a wire and cut it through an existing magnetic field. So you can see from this circuit here, there is nothing actually powering it. This was just our, um, our ammeter. Um, it's not connected. So if you intersect, it will actually move um, the it will move the needle on the ammeter. And then if you put it down again, it would move it the opposite way. It actually generates an alternating current, which you should know what that is from P2. The second method of generating a, um, an electric current is you can move a magnet in and out of a coil wire uh, to induce a potential difference um, in the coil. So you can move this magnet in and then as soon as it's still, there would be no current flowing. There'd be no potential difference induced. Uh, and as soon as you move out again, it would do it the other way. Again, it produces an alternating current. So here is the first method I said about intersecting. Uh, when the wire moves across magnetic field, the potential difference is induced across the wire. And when the circuit is actually a complete circuit, it means that a current is allowed to flow. So you will have to move um, so that it cuts across the field. If you move it in the same direction as the fields are parallel, so for example, if you did it this way and this way, there would be no current induced, uh, no potential difference induced, sorry, and that is because it is not intersecting it, it's going with it. So the second method, when you move a magnet in and out the coil wire, that induces potential difference because the wire is still cutting across the magnetic field. Um, when the magnet is not moving, again, there would be no potential difference induced. So this is the principle that, um, from which all electricity generators have actually been, uh, been made from. We can then use this um, in something called the motor effect. So if a current carrying wire is put into another magnetic field, so think about it, the current carrying wire already has a magnetic field around it, and then it's going through another magnetic field. Well, if you know anything about magnets, when you put two magnets together, they can either attract or they can repel. So the two fields push on each other, creating a force, because if you ever put two repelling magnets together, you can definitely feel that force. Um, so it puts a force on the wire. And that's called the motor effect. And that's what we use in so many uh, electric motors today. So if you see this, a simple electric motor has a loop of wire inside a magnetic field, okay? So by doing this, it allows us to get a spinning effect. So here the force will be going up, and then this one, the force will be going down. Um, this will actually have a power supply here, because you can see there's a battery there, or a cell. And which is causing the current to um, go around the, the loop. And again, this would then have around it in concentric circles a magnetic field. So when the current in the wire um, interacts with the field, one side of the loop would be pushed down and the other would be pushed up. So this will have this turning effect. This makes the motor spin. Um, a simple motor spins back and forth, um, which isn't always useful. So for the motor to continue to spin in the same direction, the current needs to be reversed every half turn of the loop. This will then change the direction of the force. So this motor has a splitting ring communicator. Sorry, not communicator, communator. Um, and each time the loop is vertical, the current inside reverses. So the side of the loop that was pushed up is now then pushed down, and that causes it to spin. Now, most motors rotate at 1,000 RPM, which is resolutions per minute. Um, 
You can increase the size of the force on the wire by increasing the strength of the magnet, uh, magnetic field, so having a really, really strong magnet. Or increase the current that is flowing through the wire, so basically you have a stronger, a stronger cell or um, battery. You can change the direction of the force of the wire by either reversing the direction of the magnetic field, so swapping the magnet around. Or reversing the direction of the current, uh, so switching the terminals on the power supply. Now, um, as you see here, it shows the current is going in this direction, going around. And the force field always goes from north to south. And that would cause it to go down. If it was north to south and the current was reversed in the opposite direction, it would cause the force to go up. And you might think, well, how would you know that? Um, you should have been taught about something called Fleming's left hand rule. He was a scientist who discovered this, discovered this. So you have to use your left hand. You um, put your thumb upwards. You put your first finger out and you put your second finger at 90 degrees to your first finger. Now, your thumb shows the movement that the force is acting in. So basically, what direction will the wire go in? Your um, first finger shows a field direction, so from north to south. And your second finger shows the current direction, which will go from the positive to the negative terminal. OK, um, I came up with a way before you could remember this from many different ways, uh, but Mr. Fleming's cool might be your opinion, might not, but that shows M for movement, F for field, and C for current. Uh, you can work out which way it's going to act. So if you have a look at this exam question here, this is from June 2013. So this was already had a different um, a different topic earlier for question A and B, A and B, and question C has come in and it's related it to a motor. So each G machine um, is rotated by an electric motor. The diagram shows a simple electric motor. So here you've got your power supply, you've got your current going in this direction, and you've got your um, simple loop, and you've got a pair of permanent magnets from north to south there. So the question says, a current flows through the coil of the motor. Explain why side A of the coil experiences a force. This is not asking um, what direction the motor is going to spin in. It is asking why it experiences a force. So for this, you need to say that because this has a power supply on it, that around the um, wire, there will be a magnetic field. This magnetic field on, on side A will then interact with the permanent magnet's magnetic field. And that's why. Then says draw arrows in the diagram to show the direction of the forces acting on side A of um, of the coil and side C of the so to go back to the exam question you need to make your Fleming's left hand rule um, so first of all have a look at your um, magnetic field that is going from north to south so you need to have your your first finger pointing from north to south so pointing in this way but if you have a look here the current is going sort of away from you so you need to turn your hand so that your second finger is pointing um, away from you and then you will find that your thumb is pointing downwards so side a would be going downwards if we then have a look at side c we've got our magnetic field from north to south so um put it bring it back up again north to south your second finger is then should be pointing towards you and you'll see that that brings your thumb going upwards. So side C would be going upwards to answer this question um, here. It says, when horizontal side B experiences no force, give a reason why. Well, side B won't experience force because it is not intersecting the um, magnetic field. And because it's, there's no intersection, it's parallel. So nothing would actually happen. While the G machine is rotating, the operators want to increase the speed. What can the operators do to make the G machine rotate faster? Now, we said before, to make it go faster, you could do a couple of things. Um, you could increase the current or you could increase the magnet strength. Now, 
the fact that they say here whilst it's operating you're not really going to be able to change permanent magnets although that is accepted as an answer but you should be thinking about increasing the current and um, here you go the answers for that question on the electromagnet So different uses of the motor effect that can come up in the P3 exam as well. So it's used in everyday objects such as trains, hybrid cars, game controllers, mobile phones, electric fans, disk drives, helicopters, food processors and thousands of different other places. Okay, So for you guys mobile phones are quite important. Um, maybe not so much food processors at the moment but it is in everyday life, it is an important thing. Um, two that they like to bring up are things like analog animators and loudspeakers they love to talk about quite a bit in the exam. So for this one, you can see there's an, an, an analog animator. Uh, so this one works by having a coil attached to a small spring between a pair of small magnets. The spring is attached to a needle that shows the size of the current on the dial. When there is a current in the coil, it rotates the compass and the spring. And for greater current, the force is greater and the spring is compressed more. So if you just sort of learn those different processes about how it works, it becomes an exam, you can then use it. The one, um, the one that comes up quite a bit that I've noticed is a loudspeaker. It can be like a four, six mark question sometimes. So basically this is a loudspeaker here, um, if you know anything about sound you should know that sound comes from vibrations, compressions of air or air particles, so you can then you can then hear it. So inside the speaker there's a plastic cone or a paper cone, okay, which is going to make the vibrations. On the back of the cone there's a coil of wire wrapped around a magnet, you have here. And then when there is a current in the coil, it creates a magnetic field, which we know. And then that interacts with the already permanent um, magnetic field from the magnet. So it creates a force, just like the motor effect, which will either push it, um, which will push the coil out. If the current is reversed, it will then come back in again. So you get this in-out movement, which causes the pulsations for the vibrations. So the sound we hear is created by the cone moving in and out several thousand times a second. So the current in the coil changes very quickly in size and direction because the electrical signal it receives varies really, really fast. A variation in the signal creates a sound at different pitches and volumes. So here is an exam question from June 2014. It was, I think, the last question on the exam. So musicians use loudspeakers. Um, it shows you a picture here of one. So we've got the um, coil wrapped around a permanent magnet. We've got a supply here uh, of power. And it shows that there's a movement. It says a loudspeaker cone vibrates when alternating current flows through the coil. Explain why. So straight away you should be saying, just like the other question we had earlier, that the coil within the coil of wire there will be a magnetic field produced, okay? This magnetic field will then interact with the magnetic field from the permanent magnets. This will then result in a force and then the fact they've mentioned AC, which means it alternates, um, when the alternating current goes through, this will cause the direction to be changed that so go in and out. And here are the answers that it would accept for that. So I hope that video has helped. Um, leave me a message if you need me to explain anything.